And how are you doing? I have decided to do an A to Z of LGBT books. Basically talking about my favourite ones from A to Z. This was inspired by a video that Lucy the Reader made, which is an A to Z of UKYA. I'll leave a link to it in the description box. It is an amazing video. It features some incredible books. Basically, Lucy the Reader is amazing. If you're not already subscribed to her, you need to be. She's just one of the best people. She's super nice. She's super knowledgeable. Damn, girl knows her stuff. And she's just an incredible person. So go and check out her channel. Again, links in the description box below. Love her face to pieces. Hey, Lucy, hey, if you're watching this. This is inspired by her. There were some discussions on Twitter the other day, so I feel the need to put a disclaimer on top of this bad boy. I am in no way claiming this is a definitive a to Z of LGBT books. To say something like that would be incredibly irresponsible on my part, considering that a lot of this is boy boy stuff. By all means, and I urge you to do this, make your own A to Z of LGBT books. One, it's actually super fun to try and locate books for all the letters. And two, your list will be different to everyone else's list. And it can be a way of sharing these books with more people. We're always going on about how these books need more visibility. This is a great way to give 26 whole books some visibility. So yeah, this isn't a definitive list. This is just my list. Hopefully you've got some favorite on here. Hopefully you've got some books you've not actually heard of and you find some new favourites within it. But this could end up being quite long because there's 26 books in it and I'm going to get started. Not going to lie about it, some of these get pretty tenuous. A. All of the Above by James Dawson. This is an incredible book that I read this year about a girl called Polly, the boy she falls in love with and the girl she falls in love with as well. It's about sexual fluidity, it's about bisexuality, it's about labels and it is Fifty Shades of Freaking Brilliant. Love this. B. Two Boys Kissing by David Leverton. This list would not be complete without Two Boys Kissing by David Leverton. It is one of the finest pieces of LGBT LGBT fiction out there. I don't care what anyone says, it's one of the finest bits of LGBT fiction in the freaking world. I haven't got my hardback down, but I have a hardback of this as well, which has a lot of post-its in it, because there's a lot of bits in this book that are so beautiful, you're going to want to mark them up. C. Anything Could Happen by Will Walton. I read this book this year. I spoke about it more in my Coming Out Books video, which I'll pop a link to in the description box below. It's a different way of looking at coming out. It's a really, really beautiful, beautiful book. I absolutely adored it. D. The Five Stages of Andrew Brawley by Sean David Hutchinson. Told you it was tenuous. This tells the story of a boy who's been living in a hospital ever since the day his parents died in a car crash because he believes he was supposed to die in that car crash too and death is coming after him. One night he sees another boy come in with some horrific burns on his body and he feels an immediate connection to him so he starts to talk to him. It is told in graphic novel as well as story as the main character is also an artist and it is brilliant. It's so, so good. E. Every Day by David Leverton. I feel like, again, this list wouldn't be my list if there wasn't a lot of David Leverton on it. Every Day by David Leverton is about a character called A who every day wakes up in a different body. It's an incredible story, it's an incredible concept, so well executed, one of David's best I have to say. F. Fans of the Impossible Life by Kate Skelser. This book absolutely blew me away this year. For me the heart of this story was in Jeremy and Sebi, mostly Sebi, I love him with all my heart. Don't listen to anyone who tells you it's a bisexual love triangle because it is not that, it's so much more than that, it's so beautiful, yes to this. G. George by Alex G. You know, it felt inevitable that I was going to put this book on there because it was so freaking beautiful when I read it. It is the story of a nine-year-old transgender kid who is completely aware of who they are and who they want to be and wants to be Charlotte in the school production of Charlotte's Web. It is an absolute stunner of a book and the fact that it's middle grade just makes it even more perfect. It's just very sweet and very honest and I really, really loved it. H is The Geography Club by Brent Hartinger. I talked about it a while ago and how it was the Simon vs. the Home Savings Agenda before Simon vs. the Home Savings Agenda. It's just a happy book. It's not an upsetting issue book, it's just a really nice book that I really, really enjoyed. I, I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. Now, I've made it very clear that I'm not 100% on this book. It is only okay for me because of what happened with Noah and the fact that he kind of got brushed aside in the book. However, it is here because what is written is beautiful and, and the way most of Noah's story is told is just completely stunning. I loved it for that reason. I adored Noah and I feel like letting him go was really difficult and that's where my dislike for this book came from is the fact that he was let go too soon and I didn't get a chance to say goodbye but I, I'll give you the sun by Jandy Nelson. It's an absolutely beautiful book. J! Grasshopper Jungle by Andrew Smith. There's a full review of this on my channel where I'm flailing and freaking out about how brilliant this book is. It's completely weird. It's completely effed up. It's just so fantastic. It's a story of Andre and Robbie and Shan and how they are dealing with this weird kind of apocalyptic thing that is happening in their town but also kind of falling in love with each other at the same time and Andre is very unsure of who he is. He sort of loves Shan, he sort of loves Robbie, it's very confusing, it's very wonderful, I loved it to pieces. K. The Porcupine of Truth by Bill Konigsberg. This is more about Aisha's story than anything else for me. I love this book for Aisha's story. It's about a boy called Carson and this girl called Aisha who go on this road trip to find out more about Carson's grandfather because his dad is really sick. It's a lovely coming of age book and you will 
love Aisha. It's, it felt like a very honest story on her part because she's going through a lot of family issues while being a lesbian. For me, as, even though I'm not a lesbian, for me, it's something that felt very true and something that felt like it was dealt with very sensitively. L, and this is tenuous, the Half-Life Trilogy by Sally Green. It's never called that, sometimes it's called that, often not, but that is half bad, half wild, and half lost. These books tell the story of a boy called Nathan who is a half black, half white witch, which means he is half bad. This is more on here for the fact that this is a mainstream commercial fantasy novel that features a bisexual romance in it between Gabrielle and Nathan. It's absolutely stunning, I ship them so hard. It's it's just really nice to have something like that that is canon and I adore it to pieces. I absolutely love it and I want it to be Endgame for real. And it's incredibly written as well. It's a really fantastic story. It's Harry Potter, but incredibly dark. M. More Than This by Patrick Ness. I remember sitting down and reading this before I went to the event for this at Waterstones Piccadilly and I absolutely loved it. From start to finish, it's such a brilliant book. Big recommend. Actually, I recommend all of Patrick Ness. If you've watched this channel before, you'll know how much I love him. N is Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman. Alice Oseman wrote a book called Solitaire, which I have read. I wasn't crazy about Solitaire. I thought it was a very good book, but I wasn't crazy about it. However, there is an ebook short called Nick and Charlie, and for me, Nick and Charlie were the standout characters of Solitaire. I absolutely loved them to pieces. So when I found out that this was a thing that was happening, I was incredibly excited because Alice Oseman is an incredible writer. Like, there is no denying, even though I didn't completely get on with Solitaire, there's no denying that she is an incredible writer. And Nick and Charlie is about Nick and Charlie as they're about to go their separate ways because they are a year apart at school and one is about to go to university and one of them has to stay and do their last year at sixth form. And it is dealing with that long distance relationship thing, which isn't actually something that's been explored in YA an awful lot. And I think it is an important thing to talk about because there are people that will have relationships when they're young and they will have to go apart for university. and. It's an interesting thing to look at in terms of reading and it's an interesting thing to think about from someone who's not had to go through that. O is Openly Straight by Bill Koenigsberg. This is an incredible book that really discusses the whole labelling thing. There's been a lot of stuff about labels that I've seen quite recently and I think it's a really important discussion to have about how we label things and what these labels make us think and tells the story of a boy who doesn't want to be labelled anymore so when he moves to a new school he decides not to tell anyone that he's gay and in doing so he almost closets himself and it's very interesting to see how his family reacts to that and how his old friends react to that in terms of is he hiding a part of himself what is he doing but then he discovers this relationship with this boy called Ben and it is a very interesting relationship because for, to Ben's knowledge Rafe isn't gay and it's interesting how the relationship develops with no label on it at all and just this feeling of love between them. It's an absolutely gorgeous book. P is Ask the Passengers by A.S. King. It tells the story of a girl called Astrid who is struggling to come to terms with her own sexuality because of a pushy mum and the small town life that she's living and it's her trying to come to terms with herself and whenever she's feeling awkward about something she looks up to the sky and she sends her thoughts up to the passengers flying over in the airplanes. It's such a beautiful story, it's such an odd concept that doesn't seem like it should work, but it works so well and it's just incredible. It's the first S King that I've read and it's one of those books where you read it and you don't think there could be a more perfect book. Q is Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. It tells the story of a boy called Leonard Peacock and he's 18 years old and he's decided he wants to say goodbye. And he goes around to see these different people that have affected his life in some way and to see if any of them will wish him a happy birthday. And it's him looking for a reason to not do what he is about to do. It's an absolutely stunning book and one of the most affecting things I've ever read. R is The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness, the second Patrick Ness in this list. This is again another stunning read from Patrick Ness and it features the character called Jared, a big gay linebacker who is unashamedly himself. It's one of the books that shows a different side to the LGBT experience and that it's not always a struggle and it's not always a sad, sad story. Sometimes it is just what it is and it's sometimes it's just an amazing character who you'll fall in love with and who is just the best, best friend and just one of the most wonderful people ever. S is Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe by Benjamin Alire Thayen. Still can't say a surname, really sorry. This is an epic love story of these two boys who meet coincidentally. One teaches the other how to swim and suddenly they're in each other's lives and in and out of each other's lives an awful lot. And it's heartbreaking, it's beautiful, it's absolutely 100% worth it. I didn't know if I was going to like this that much and there were points at the beginning where I wasn't entirely sure but this is an absolutely beautiful book. T is This Book is Gay by James Dawson which is basically a manual for being a gay person. It is a stunning read. It's funny, it's honest, it's very explicit in places and it's just a fantastic book. I'm so pleased James wrote this. It's absolutely wonderful and so very much needed in the world. It's one of those books that every library needs to have for that kid who maybe will need something like this. I know I could have done with this when I was growing up. It's a completely brilliant non-fiction book that just talks about growing up gay and what that's like and 
offers you all of the information you could possibly need. You is Unbecoming by Jenny Downham. I have a full review of this on my channel, which I'll pop a link to in the description box below. Links to all of these books on Goodreads and any reviews that I've done will be in the description box below, so you can go and take a look at them. This is telling the story of a girl who is coming to terms with her sexuality and she is struggling with it because she's got a whole, of, a whole mess of other things going on in her life. And it felt so incredibly real the way it was being told in that she was going through all of this other stuff and still trying to come to terms with this other huge thing change in her life in her own head. Again, absolute stunner. Loved it so much. One of my top books of 2015 without a doubt. V is Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. I've done a review of this as well. It's an absolutely stunning book. It's just beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. It's so happy. I've read it three times. It's one of the happiest books I've ever read and I'll always read it on a rainy day when I'm not feeling too good. It's just an absolute stunner for reasons of just being a book of pure joy and wonderfulness. Yay for Becky Alvatelli. W is The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson. Again, I'm an absolutely brilliant, brilliant book and was my favourite book that I read in 2014 even though this came out in 2015. It was my favourite book that I read in 2014. It's an absolutely stunning book about a young boy called David who wants to be a girl. He's known, always known that he wants to be a girl and it's him coming to terms with that and him meeting this other boy called Leo who he has this connection with and the two of them helping each other figure things out. It's just beautiful. It's an absolute stunner and if this doesn't win some big prizes next year, I'll be really freaking surprised because it is amazing. X is Remix by Non Pratt. Not strictly an LGBT book, but gains major props for showing some mad realness when it comes to real gay relationships. The brother of one of the main characters in this is gay and his relationship with his boyfriend is just felt so very real and so very poignant to me. Non has a massive gift with when it comes to writing secondary characters. I have an interview with her on my channel which you can go and check out. I'll pop a link in the description box below but we talked about this a lot and how real she makes her secondary characters an absolutely brilliant book. And finally, for Y and Z, because I couldn't find a book beginning with Z, and the link to this one is tenuous as heck, is Boy Meets Boy by David Levithan. This book is on this list for the main reason that this book saved my life. It's an incredible book. I read it again and again and again and it just makes me incredibly happy. It tells a story of a utopian town in the middle of America where people are gay or lesbian or trans or bisexual or whatever and everything is okay and no one's bothered by it and no one really bats an eye at the whole thing and it's just so beautiful and it was everything I needed when I first read it when I was 19 and it is still a book that I imagine a lot of people will have a lot of love for. It's an incredible book. I love it with all my heart. It's my favourite book of all time. Boy Meets Boy with David Leverton. Absolute stunner. Love meets love. Confusion meets clarity. Gorgeous. So that's it. That's my A to Z of LGBT books. Please, I implore you, make your own A to Z of LGBT books. It is actually a lot of fun to try and find books that fit each of these letters, no matter how tenuously. But your list will be different to mine. And link me to your list as well. You can follow me on Twitter at the George Lesser. You can tell me where your lists are. If you're a blogger and you've posted on a blog or if you've done a video, I would love to know what your lists are. I would love to see them because it would point me in the direction of some more LGBT books that I have not read yet. I would love to see them. So if you do one, please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and put a like on this. I hope you enjoyed this. Leave a comment below and let me know. I love your faces and I'll speak to you soon. Bye! Now my throat is really dry.